Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, looking at making a new cope and drag for doing a bit of casting. So um, if you're not into this sort of thing, cope and drag is just the, the boxes that you ram sand into to make your mold and cast aluminium, iron, copper, all those sorts of good things. Um, I have done a little bit of casting previously and I've still got one of the boxes where I used and they don't have to be anything clever. I mean, look at this. This is some old decking planks screwed together and I had two of those and some little clamps that bolted them together. Um, one since got uh, broken, lost, don't know if I'm honest. Um, so I need to make up uh, a new open drag. And anyway, this is a little bit big for the sorts of things I'm looking at casting at the moment. Not very matters if it's too big, it's just a lot of sand and a lot of effort for um, tiny little things. So, over here we have our fix. And these are <coughs> wooden boxes that you can pick up from any car boot sale. Uh, tend to have things like engineering instruments in them. These have had machine tools. Um, so you can see the foam inserts for a round tool that's been in there. And I've got a few of these knocking around me. So my plan is strip out the insides of these, take the lids off, and then I'm going to use the two bases without the bottoms on to make the cope and drag. And I've got an idea how to use the latches so that uh, it's all looking neat and smart. So here we go. I'm going to start with getting the foam out of this one. Oh, that's it. Much battle done to get that one piece. Right, so got me one base and both parts of the clip. Just going to repeat that on the other one now. There we go. So, I've got my two bases. What I'm going to do is put them together back to front, like so, and refit the other halves of the clips so that it can clamp it back together. Using some really sharp screws with nice heads so that this really bites. Put one screw in and then do up the toggle clamp. Done. There we go. Now, I can whip the others in. There we are. Two boxes clamped together with nice lifting handles on the sides. Next thing is I need the bases off. I've left them on up till now to keep it nice and rigid. Um, I imagine there's gluing involved as well. So I'm gonna 
take these screws out just as a bit of an experiment to see what's going on so this is the plan b process we're gonna keep the base on we're instead put a hole in it using the base as a frame I'm going to use a spade bit in the corners um, and all I'm going to do is touch the blade to the wall on one side try and match so I'm nice and even in the corner touch it yep that's nicely positioned hang it over the edge make the first contact oops, in the corner so that we can see that the holes in the right place there's also a little pilot hole on the back now drill from this side that way I get a neat finish both ends and repeat four times. Then we're going to use a jigsaw, like this one, to cut along the inside of the box. I'm going to lean the blade on the wood. I should be able to feel when I'm touching it. Getting a perfect finish isn't important. One box and I'll just go around this with a file just so there's no splinters. Okay. So there we are. Now got two boxes that link together. And we're almost there. All that's lacking really is something to align it. So that when you put them down, you know you're getting a really accurate alignment. So for them alignment dowels, I basically got these nice heavy angle irons, uh, a long bolt with a short nut, a matching item which has a reasonable fit. I think I've got a clearance in there about half a mil maximum, which is more than accurate enough for me. And what I'm going to do is pop two holes in each of these brackets and screw them with some uh, good screws to the side of the box both on this side of the box that way I'm giving myself a bit of foolproofing or a pokey if you like that language um, meaning I can't put it on back to front which is a, uh, a potential casting issue so I'm going to drill a hole in these and get them in place
Let's look at putting these in place. I want to leave, uh, I don't want them flush with the gap because I've got to put a nut in here. So let's just see how much space I'm going to leave. And on she goes. Just at a thought, rather than putting both on the front so that I don't mix them up, all I've got to do is put one pin up, one pin down. Go! Oh, so actually, I could go opposite corners, which would be a lot neater. So let's do that. Undo the clamps, lift box off, they're below the surface, dowels on the top, and I can just position using that and that together and there's no play. And one thing I will do is probably just put a point on the end of the uh, pins just to make it easier to pull them together. What I'm going to do is get a length of some nice reflective paint, uh, not paint, tape even. There we go. The sort of stuff that number plates are made of. Put it there. Right. Drag and cope. Line there. And also bottom, top, and hopefully this will get reassembled the right way. Just grab my knife. Split that. Split that. And rub that down. One cope and drag made for peanuts, and I do mean peanuts. Those two boxes cost five pounds the pair, and um, everything else is odds and sods but I got knocking around in the garage. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of To The Garage. Um, we're going to be doing some casting obviously. Um, if you want to follow along with this series that'd be great. Look at all the other great videos that are on To The Garage. Anything to do with playing around in garage and shed, Jaguars, T25s, Navaras, all the toys and bits and pieces that I like playing with then please subscribe, uh, please consider sharing, give us a thumbs up, always pleased to see your comments. Uh, what are you guys using for coats and drags? If you've uh, got your own little um, forge, foundry, or whatever processes you've got running in your back garden, um, love to hear from you. So until next time, see ya. Gates quitting in it.